Celtics, let's go! Good evening. I said good evening. Are y'all ready to see Morris Chestnut? Are y'all sure y'all ready to see Morris Chestnut? All right, I, I know a lot of you ladies are ready to see Morris Chestnut. I didn't know you could do better than that. Are you ready to see Morris Chestnut? Y'all don't scream for me like that. What's going on? All right, go ahead. So before we bring out our guests and, and show you the wonderful uh, clips of Our Kind of People, there's a party tonight. We're having an Our Kind of People closing party that Fox is putting on at Cardboard Box. You all are welcome. It's free. Please join us at Cardboard Box after this. It'll be a fun time. Let's party. We did it. This is our last activation. We showed 80 films. I want to thank General Motors and Cadillac, our presenting sponsors. They bought us Miss Regina King. Wasn't that lovely? HBO Max, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, P&G, our media partner, the Boston Globe, everyone. Thank you, and all of you, thank you for supporting us during this little covid -y kind of off year. We're doing this safely. Thank you for wearing your mask and for social distancing. I can't wait till our 20th anniversary in 2022, where we can fill the theater up. We're going to fill the theater up. The dates are August 5th to the 13th, so now y'all know, y'all can book your house in. It's August 5th to the 13th. So we're really excited to get this evening going. Thank, and I want to thank uh, a couple of people that I got. This doesn't just happen with Floyd and I. Uh, we have an amazing, amazing team, uh, a staff, and amazing volunteers. So I want to give a shout out to our team, Charlene and Michael Waynes. Where are you? Put your hands in the air. They're working. I don't know where they are. Michelle Pascal, who does our public relations. Thank you, Michelle Pascal. Kelly Jackson, who couldn't be with us this year but worked with us remotely, Ms. Kelly Jackson. And our new addition to our team, the Gomez Howard Group, all the way from Denver, Colorado. Thank you so much, Gomez Howard Group. Uh, Joanna Marlowe, thank you so much for everything. And all of our volunteers, we love you. We couldn't do this without you. We salute you. Too many names to name, but thank you. Okay, before we begin, we're going to hear, um, hear a few words from the creator of the, of the show, Our Kind of People. Uh, she, could, she was supposed to be here tonight, but she couldn't make it, so she wants to uh, say hello to you guys virtually. Her name is Miss Karen Giss, so we're going to see a clip of Miss Karen Giss. Good evening. I'm Karen Gist, the writer, creator, and executive producer of Fox's new show, Our Kind of People. It is inspired by the acclaimed book written by Lawrence Otis Graham. Fortunately, we are in production on the show currently, but unfortunately, that means that I can't be there in person with you tonight. But in my place, you will sit down and have a conversation with our gorgeous and talented leading man, Morris Chestnut who will be there to talk about our show, talk about what we have in store, and also talk about his illustrious career. Um, again, thank you so much for having us. We're so excited to be a part of this festival. Congratulations on 19 years of excellence, and I hope to see you next year. Thank you. All right, here we go. Please give a warm Martha's Vineyard welcome to our moderator for this evening, Ms. Julie Wilson, Beauty Director at Cosmopolitan. Come on out, Julie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a seat. And all right, I want y'all to show out, show this brother's love. He's traveled a long way to be here. Mr. Morris Chestnut. Come on out, Morris. All right. Can you hear us? Oh, there we are. I think I might be the luckiest girl on the island. Um, my husband's in the house, so we're respectfully swooning tonight. And you have a lovely wife, so. But I was telling Morris before he came out that I had these like weekend like movie binges with my girlfriends in college called Morris Chestnut is my baby's daddy. <laughs> 
And so this is not our first time meeting, but I'm like, this is kind of fate. Like, they just keep bringing it back. Like, I manifested this back in college that we would actually have all of this, like, professional time together. So manifest, y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, put it, I think the button. Oh. Thank you, you for having me. Oh. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I was scolding you in the back a little bit because you're only here for like 24 hours. Yes, I, you know, um, I, I need to spend some time here. I, I, you know, I, I, we're in production right now, so um, I came in today. I'm leaving tomorrow because I work on, uh, on Monday, but I need to come back and spend some quality time. Yes. I do. Right? I'm going to do that for sure. But also, I mean, we know you from so many movies and so many, you know, projects, but you were actually, you were in the Inkwell. Hello. You were <laughs> in the right. movie. You were in the Spike Lee joint, the Inkwell, so. Yes. I, I was in the, yeah, I, I, I was. I was. We didn't love that character. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was. But. Uh, what was that like being, let's just talk a little bit about Martha's Vineyard because we're sure. here and I know everyone sure. in the crowd, a lot of it, like this is our happy place. And so you got to do a really iconic movie around the Inkwell it's, and Martha's you know, Vineyard. It's really exciting to be here and just to see the city and take everything in. Like I said, I've only been here today. But yes, I was in the movie The Inkwell. Um, you know, me being from California, I hadn't really spent much time on the, on the East Coast. And um, so even when we did that movie, we filmed it in, uh, in um, North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, yes. And so, um, so we never even came to the, wink, to the Inkwell. Wow. I know. I know. That? Everyone's like shocked I by know, this right? fact. I know. <laughs> I know. So have you spent any time here? Like, is it a place that you've like come with your family or friends at all? Or are you, are you planning to come back? I'm, it will be, it will be now. I mean, I've never, I, I've, I've never, I've never been, I've never been here and, and I'm just, I'm excited to be here now. Yeah. I'm excited to do a, a TV show about it. I'm learning more about it through the book. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, a, it's, I'm really excited. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the show, our kind of people. I know a lot of us in here know the book, which is. Do you guys, do you guys know the book? Okay. Yes. Okay. But the you know the book is nonfiction, and so you fictionalize this into a real story around this family. Tell us a little bit about like what we can expect. What is this story about? It's it's a it's a very interesting story. It's a uh, it's it's somewhat of a of a thrilling soap type of a of a, of a TV show. Um, but it does have fictional characters based around the, the like you say the the book, which just has a lot of non-fictional history of Martha's Vineyard. And that to me that was the that to me that was the most interesting and fun thing, you know, to um, the, to, to to research about the character in the show. When I did the Inkwell a number of years ago, um, probably about two years ago. No. <laughs> no. When I did the Inkwell a number of years ago, we you know we just went down there and you know and, we, and I didn't really learn much about Martha's Vineyard. You know, obviously being on the West Coast, I've, you've heard you, I've heard about it, but I didn't do much research then. But um, now when we have the the the, uh, the show um, that's based on the book, you know, and reading the book, it's a it's a lot of interesting history. And that's what I'm excited to, you know, convey to audience to, to the audience because, you know, we have we're, we're doing a lot of things in the show that I don't think people have ever seen before. So yeah, for sure. That. Have you guys heard about the show? I know you've heard about the book, but have you heard about the show coming to Fox? Okay, right. well, it's not a lot of clap. It's okay. not enough. We got we, we got to get, we got publicity. We got publicity. Right. We have to get our publicity right. up. That's well, I want to throw it real quick to the promo. Let's do that. So everyone can see the promo for the show um, to get a little bit, a little taste of it, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what to expect. Cool. Promo. I was young when I learned there was a difference between us and them. The only crown I've ever worn is the one growing out of my head. But I have a secret that will expose them all. So whether they like it or not, I belong here. That was a teaser, yes. Yes. 
It's like some drama. There's yes. There's drama. There's intrigue. There's scandal. There's a lot. There's there's tragedy. There's a little bit of everything in the show. Yeah, I mean, what can I know? Everyone's like so close-lipped about like you know plot line and all of that, but. Give us a little bit of like who you play, yes. what your role in it is. We see Yaya DaCosta there, yes. who is coming in, is kind of like this X factor coming into this family. And she's in beauty, which yes. you know I love because I'm yes. a beauty director. But yes. tell us how you play a role in all of this. Right, right, right. Um, I got to make sure the, the, the <laughs> studio publicist. No, I can't give you guys too much. What give I us can't the say, tea. Give us the, the base, tea. The, the, the basics of the show is Yaya's character. She's coming to uh, Martha's Vineyard. Um, I'm trying to figure out how, how much I can, what I can say and how much I can say. But she is. She's coming to Martha's Vineyard, and it will be an exploration in um, the different uh, classes of people, of black people. You have the elite, and then you have the working class. Um, I play uh, Raymond Dupont, who um, my family is is um, I'm one of the wealthy families in Martha's Vineyard, who, who generational, been there for generations, and um, and um, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of hard. I can't really no. give too much away, but it's 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 how it's 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 it, you know, and, I, and I'm really doing a bad job, but. I'm trying. I'm trying to say stuff without saying stuff, but it's basically it's an exploration in, and you, know, you will see different class, different classes of of black people, including wealth, and how we interact even with um, white wealthy people as well. Do you um, do you like your character? I love is the character. I love the character because one of the things you know that I'm really excited about the show is a lot of times in the black community, you know, when you see wealth and opulence it's either coming from sports or entertainment in s of some form um and for us you know for the families in the show it's generational wealth and i think that's what i'm really excited because most people don't even realize you know how much money there is in the black community that come from you know just hard working business people and generations yeah i absolutely I know that one of the characters, your the, your son in the show, also is like an athlete, right? I feel yes. like I read this, so like, yeah, I, I don't yeah. think I'm telling anything. You know, flag me if I'm saying anything. But he, I see, I yes, can't, we I okay? Can't find her. Yeah, yeah, I think right. we're good. I can't, she's not yelling at me, so I think we're good. Okay, yes, we're good. Yes, my son um, is an he's aspiring an athlete, athlete. and yes. like, there's some tension there behind that because you know, is, is it is your character? Is there tension there because, not that he's not a good athlete, but you just want him to go in a different path and not, you know, be a, maybe stereotypical, go into professional sports? Yes. One of the things that, you know, with my character, I'm really, I'm very traditional in, in this sense to where I'm part of the boule, you know, we don't call it the boule in the, in the show, but I'm part of the, you know, with all these social clubs and I kind of want my son to follow in my footsteps because everything that I've worked so hard for to continue the legacy of, um, he is my only son and he's threatening, he's threatening to, um, <laughs> I, I don't really, it, you know, it, it's, it, you know, the, the legacy could end maybe, yeah. I could say that. Y'all, I'm working overtime to get him to tell <laughs> us some stuff. I'm, so. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I mean, I wish, I, I wish that, I mean, I know we have another, another, uh, another, trailer but i don't really know how much you know i mean this is we'll, what's we'll, that huh i didn't hear what we'll, you said we'll we'll show it in a second okay. but um so so you like the character it's a character that you feel i, I know that when i heard that the show was coming um you know there's a lot of feelings around this book right and talk I to me like what? Of, what, are, what are the feelings? feelings? Just talk about it. It's a conversation. I mean, it's, you know, the bougie, the elite, the, the, the clubs, the Jack and Jill, the, all of that, that have a lot of negative connotations sometimes. And I think that it was like, well, how are they going to fictionalize this in a way that also, you know, uplifts a lot of these you know, um, organizations and communities um, in a way that doesn't you know, again, uplifts it. So were you at all nervous about the project? Were you really 
I mean, I'm sure you're thoughtful about anything that you do, but like really reading the script, really understanding the book, and really understanding the type of storytelling that was going to be put out here. No, I was actually excited about it because we are going to we we're, we're going to touch on some sensitive sensitive topics, sensitive subjects, and I think there are subjects that we do dis that we do discuss, um, and we cover in the show that it they need to be discussed. You know, they need to be talked about. Um, and I mean, there are a lot of, th yeah, there are a lot of things that, you know, people may feel are negative, um, like say some of the mentions about some of the organizations, but, you know, people always talk to me, they, they ask me, um, you know, so how did you meet your wife, right? And I say, well, I met my wife in a club. Oh, you met your wife in a club? How you meet her in a club? And uh, my answer to people is, um, you know, whenever you go to the club, everybody in the club isn't bad. You know, it's just where they are in their lives. So it's the same with the organizations and the perceptions of these organizations that some people may have. Everybody in the organization, these organizations aren't bad. You know, you have good and bad people everywhere. And so that's one of the things that I'm really excited to, to really get the conversation going. And that's really, I think us as a community, um, you know, I think there are a lot of serious conversations that, w that, w that we need to have, and, and hopefully this will be the thing that, 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 um, that inspires that conversation. Nice. And do you touch on at all any social justice stuff? We, uh, you obviously know we're in this now. Everyone's trying to be woke. We're, you know, and I feel like having a show with an all-black cast um, is important again, with the storytelling, is there anything in there that also talks about social justice? So I don't, at, to this point, I don't think that from the scripts that I've read and the conversations that I've had, I don't think there's going to be too many issues that we are not going to touch on. I think we're not going to shy away from um, sensitive issues, and that's sensitive to anybody. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna really delve into to some sensitive subjects. Amazing. Okay, so let's throw it to the teaser now because we get into a little bit more okay, about. I, think, I hope it shows a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, right. it does. This is the perfect time for the show because it's long overdue. The black elite, a group of people who have had money for a very long time, who will pass it on from generation to generation, which is a part of black culture that we've never seen before. It's two families in two financial stratospheres, but dealing with the same struggles. It's a story of triumph. There's a lot that I think people are just going to connect to. It's entertainment that will take the audience on a roller coaster ride of emotions. I don't think anything like this has been seen on TV, so it's really exciting. A lot of people feel that money cures all, but not exactly. There's no dull moment in this show. There's drama, there's tragedy, there's love. And then it gets spicy. This is a look at what it means to be black in America, holding the American dream in black hands. You're not going to want to change the channel, and you're going to want to come back every week. <laughs> yes. That's so exciting, but it still didn't tell us very didn't much. Didn't tell you very much. I'm, I'm just, I'm it just did. gonna put that out there that we need a little bit more. Morris. Joe Morton's in the show. I don't know if everybody knew that. I gotta give you a uh, Nadine Ellis plays my wife. Uh, we know that Yaya drives a red car, right? <laughs> we know that much. We see a private jet, like there's, there's a we lot. We see a private jet, yes, my family owns a private jet. It's re I'm, really I'm really excited, I mean, it, like I say, just for a number of reasons, just for um, the conversations that I think this is, gonna, this is gonna inspire. And so you said this inkwell was shot in Wilmington, North Carolina, and this was shot in Wilmington, North Carolina. This is also being shot. In Clearly North we need, all need to go to Wilmington, North Carolina because it's another well, whole <laughs> Martha's Vineyard. Like, what's going on? That's so, funny. Yeah, the last time I worked with Joe Morton was because he was also in the Inkwell, was when we were in Wilmington, North Carolina. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you know, Wilmington, you know, it's a, it's a tax credit thing, and, and, uh, and uh, you guys probably wouldn't allow us to shoot here anyway. I don't know. 
you guys have the film festival here, we should be able to come here. But um, but it's one of those things to where, yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it does a pretty good job. It's not Martha's Vineyard, but it, you know. Yeah, but uh, clearly, it's beautiful, and it, it and it's a good replacement. Yes. Um, so you're spending a lot of time there. You're from LA, but now you're shooting in Wilmington. So you're like that's home base right now because you said you're only how many um episodes in. Uh, we're only, we're, we just finished our uh, second episode. We're in our third episode now. Okay. And um, so, yeah, so we'll be there. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be there till November. And, yes, I'm from L.A., okay. shooting in Wilmington. Um, wish I was in Martha's Vineyard because I like it here. Um, but, uh, but, no, it's, it's great. So you'll be there till November? I'll be there till November. So is the family out there with you? We know you got wife and kids. Are they coming to visit? Well, my kids are older now, um, so they don't think about me like that. You know, <laughs> you know, kids in their twenties, they know everything, and they, you know, and let them take over the world. But now, so they won't come visit. My wife will, though. What do they think of the project so far? Like what you've told them, because clearly you're not telling anyone anything. But I, maybe you've maybe you've told them a little bit more. See, I'm so tempted to break down and right. tell y'all something. I'm like, Where's come Nyla? on, come on, Fox. Is Nyla around I'm here somewhere? I'm so tempted to break. What you guys want to know about the show? Any questions? That's a great question. Is y she said, is Yaya my ex-girlfriend that I had a baby with? I can tell you no. This one says she's you your no child. I, I can tell you that. I, I can tell you that when you do watch the show, and I like the way you're thinking, I think it's gonna, you're going to be thinking a lot of different things, but it's, it's probably not going to be right. <laughs> Most people. I can tell you that. You'll be thinking a lot of things, but it won't be right. It, it won't be right. It won't be right. It okay. won't be right. I mean, we have a, there's, there are a lot of surprises. Um, it's, uh, you know, the one thing I, you know, I basically say is it is a, it's a, it's basically a, a, a nighttime soap, but it's, 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 it's grounded in somewhat reality. I mean, it's some of the things that happen to these characters, um, a lot of people will be able to relate to. Um, and not just from a uh, salacious standpoint, but like I said, from a so social justice standpoint. Uh, we're going to touch on things. We're going we're gonna to touch on things, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start a, a lot of conversations. So this is like distinctly like grown folk television. We're not watching this with your kids. Well, it comes on at nine o'clock on Fox, September twenty first. Okay. And Fox, and you know, and Fox, you know, nine o'clock is more of an yeah. edgier hour, you know, for for Fox. Um, See, my kids like to stay up, how do, go to sleep. How old are your kids? So I'm just gonna. I have a seven year old and a seven month old. Okay, I can, the seven-month-old may be too young. Right. right. Well, but not the seven-month-old, <laughs> so. but see, he won't understand, right? Right, right. You well, know, when we put the seven-year-old to sleep and we have the seven-month-old, that's when we start cussing again. Oh, is that right? Because he All doesn't right. know. Well, they we, soak up everything. So. They soak up everything. <laughs> no, but we have, um, no, I can't say that. I think that, no, I think, I, I do think that the entire family can watch. Um, but there's, there's going to be conversations. I mean, there, I mean, there are uncomfortable there are uncomfortable conversations in our communities that we really don't have that are very um, are very real to what the history of Martha's Vineyard is. Right. You know. But so also, like you said, legacy, right? You have such an amazing personally. You have such an amazing legacy in your career Thank and you. the body of work that you've done. Um, what kind of conversations do you talk to your kids about? About generational wealth and their legacy and like you know where they come from in your family right um i try to have <laughs> conversations with my kids i love my kids um we don't always see <laughs> eye to eye preface? we don't always see eye to eye on things you set you know? that one up a little too i love them but i love them i love them but uh, you know I, they, we don't we don't always see eye to eye just, just like they? on the show um, 24 and 22. Your daughter's 22 Two. and your son's 24. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and you haven't sat them down like this, save your money. This is what we need to do. This is, you know, this, how you invest. Like we're having those conversations with our seven year old, not like serious, serious, but like, you know, setting up a bank account, making sure that he understands right. that, you know, it's important. We might not have private jet, but like we want him, we want to move the needle. 
is what I always say. Without like it's all doubt. about moving the needle from the you know further than the generation before us did. Right. I wish I would start at seven. I wish I would start at seven. No, I, you know I've had those conversations. Um, you know we used to we used to uh, particularly during the pandemic because I was in Atlanta working on a project and they were um, in another state. You know we used to have you know we used to have zooms. You know once a week, sometimes twice a week. Um, but then when the world opens back up, they forget everything and they go and do what they do, you know? So it's just kids. They'll, they'll, they'll come around. Yeah, for sure. So tell us about the cast. Yes. Because it's an amazing, I heard all the oohs and ahs as the teaser was showing of like, yes. oh, that person's on it and this person's on it. Yes. What was it like working with this cast of folks? Um, it's incredible. First and first and foremost, Joe Morton, like I said, we worked together many years ago. Um, and, and he has an incredible character, um, to where he has an incredible character that people are going to really enjoy. Um, Yaya's great. Um, Wait, what, what, it, who, can you tell us who his character is? Okay, so I'll tell Do you this. You? So Joe, Mor Joe Morgan plays my wife's father. Okay, so, so he's your he father-in-law? Is, He's, yes, he is, he's my father-in-law on the show, and he is, uh, he is in control of a lot of the companies. Um, because, uh, yeah, so he's in control of a lot of the companies. Then you have uh, Yaya's, oh, and it, uh, talk about legacy. So we have Joe Morton, then we also have Debbie Morgan on the show, who, uh, who plays, also play. yes, Debbie Morgan. She's also, she's also incredible on the show. Um, Nadine Ellis plays my wife on the show. Um, uh, we have uh, Kyle Berry plays my son. Uh, Ryan Brown plays my daughter. They're twins. I don't know if you guys saw that from the trailer. Oh, but they're twins. Have, they're twins, yes. And in real life or just on the show, we were saying? Just on the show. Okay. But they, but they can be All twins. Right. No, they really have, they really have uh, great communication as, as if they were twins. They can finish each other's sentences and all that stuff now, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there's, it's kind of a weird thing, but yeah, so they, they play our, our, our skits on the show, and then we have a newcomer, Alana, who plays uh, Yaya's daughter, mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's, it's great working with the cast because it's, they're, you know, we're touching on some topics. I know, are there any fun, like, stories from set? Or anything, or table reads, or anything. Where people, are like, oh, I don't know if we can say that. Or no, no, no. It's not any, uh, nothing really in particular about a table read or anything like that. Or you know, we do have fun on set. As a matter of fact, you know, Joe Morgan. I mean, Joe Morton. Joe Morton. Uh, Debbie Morgan. Joe Morton. But De um, Joe Morton. He spends a lot of time here. He uh, he gave me a lot. He gave me a lot of places. That, you know, I think he has family out here and everything. So he spends a lot of time here. So he's really like I really talk to him quite a bit when we're not working, just about a lot of things about here in Martha's, Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, for sure. So you said there's some newcomers in the cast. Yes. Are you like impressed by their you know their acting skills and like you know their acting chops? I'm always excited when these shows come because obviously for the legends like yourself, but to see new talent come through and especially story, telling our stories. It's, you know, it, it, it really is. It's very impressive. As a matter of fact, Nadine Ellis, who plays my wife on the show, um, we were just talking to them. There's just so much further ahead than I was at that age, just in their knowledge and what they talk about and things that they think about. It's, and, it, and it's always, it's, it's always fun to see um, you know, new talent pop on the scene and, and, you know, how excited they are. And it takes me back to when I was their age and doing certain projects. So, and they do a, they do a tremendous job on the show. Nice. Do you have, are you working on any other projects while in, in tandem to this? Or is this kind of just like what you're focusing on right now? Right. So I am, I'm still going to be, I'm, I'm still going to be doing, I was doing the show, uh, The Resident, that's also on Fox. And so I'm still going to, oh, you guys like the show? Okay, cool. Also, shout out to Fox. Because y'all yeah, know Fox. what's up. Yes. You got this man working overtime, and we love him. <laughs> but I think that that's amazing that they are really investing in your career and know that we want to see you. Oh, yeah, thank you. Well, it's, and it, and the, the, the character on The Resident is a, is a fun character. He's much different than this character. And so I was glad that they let me continue that. And, and another shout out to Fox, and, and, and because Fox, you know, some people might <laughs> confuse the Fox Network with Fox News are completely different. Well, course. you know I was going to ask. I was like, yeah. are they treating you right? You know, I was going to wait until we're like, 
back, backstage or something. Because, you right. know, when we think of Fox, you think of, like, Fox News, but they're is very separate. They're very separate. And as a matter of fact, I mean, just going throughout the histories, they brought us some of our greatest shows, you know, with Martin and Living Single uh, and Living Color ba back in the day before the other three networks really weren't putting us on. So, and then even today, you know, bringing the shows like Empire, bringing a show like this to where we can really explore and see images of wealthy black elite on television every week. You know, and so they're, Fox is really giving us an opportunity. So, shout out to Fox. Everybody, give yeah. yeah, shout out to Fox. Seriously, because Fox has receipts. What's that? The receipts. Oh, without a the doubt. The receipts are long and strong for Fox. Like, without a like doubt. you said, Martin, Living and Living Color. Living Color, Living Single. I mean, it goes on and on. That's amazing. Yeah. I yeah. love that. So, how long have you been doing Resident? Um, this is my second, second season or third, I think it's, okay. no, so this would be my third season on the Red. But it doesn't overlap, so you're able to, like, really focus. I'm always curious with actors, I don't know if anyone else is, about, like, the method acting and stuff. Like, do you really get into character? I know, like, Daniel Day-Lewis, apparently, right. is, like, a real method actor. And, right. like, when he was, like, um, he was training for, um, what is it, Gangs of New York? Uh -huh. And he was that crazy, I don't know. Gang, yeah, my husband knows. I'm yeah. watching. I don't know the, the name. B Bill the Butcher. That's what he said. And like he was like, his wife said he was like skinning like rabbits at the house and stuff. And not that that is what you're doing on the show, but do you like really get into the character and you're like, honey, we need the butler and like I need the, <laughs> the private jets and like whatever, like as you're trying to be this character for our kind of people? No, no, I, I, I wish I could do that, but no, I don't, I, don't, I can't do that. <laughs> but, but, you know, the character on The Residence is, is really fun. Um, but this character, the one thing, like I said, I'm, I'm really excited about where this character is going for the show and for the conversation. And um, and I, I apologize that I, I'm not saying much about the show, but trust me when I say that we're gonna touch on topics that we need to talk about um, from everything. I know, I'm like, give us like an example of one of those, or two or three of those topics okay. that okay. we're really gonna be talking about. Okay. Colorism, oh, look yes. It. You know what? Yes. Are we talking colorism? We are talking because colorism, yes. Yes, we are talking colorism. One million percent. Colorism, anything else? Yeah, ask me another one. What else? Yes, there is. There is. <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> well, oh, you know what? Let me say this. I'm I, glad you asked it and I didn't because I'm you know <laughs> I'm trying to come back I again. forgot to mention... I forgot to mention Lance Gross is on the show, too. You guys support Lance Gross. He's on the show, Oh, too. you buried yes. the lead. What's that? So we've got, like, all these fine black men on the show. Yeah, like, Lance, Gross, so Lance Gross is on the show. He does a great job as well. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. But, I mean, it's good. Like, like, like you said, like, it's good to have some eye candy yes. up there because we are some beautiful folk. Yes, we have And that. you have not aged a bit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What, you got to drop, drop we, the skincare regimen. So I'm a beauty director, <laughs> so like I need okay. to know. Like, don't tell me you drink water and you just wash your face with soap. What, what exactly are you doing? And I know that, that black funny. don't crack and melanin and all of that because we're all in here and we're all blessed in such a way. <laughs> what are you actually putting on your face? <laughs> now I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Um, what do I put on my face? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, there's, there's, there's no lotions or potions that you're, you're no. putting on. It's literally like I wash my face in the shower and then I come out. <laughs> it is that. Yeah, it is that. It is that. But I know I, I, I do, I do maintain a, a good diet. I exercise regularly and, um, I do drink a lot of water. I know it's not exciting. There it goes, right back to water. Right. But are you like a vegan or? No. Because I hate when people are like, oh, I'm vegan, I don't, and I'm like, I like a rib. I would yeah. like to have good skin and a rib. 
Right, like, right. <laughs> you, know? you have that. You have that. I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying that. to maintain that. that narrative because I think a lot of the narrative is just like eat salads and all that, which is good for us. Like, look, we need to th talk about our health. Do we talk about health in, in, the, show. in, in the show? Because so, that is another thing that's about generational wealth, too, is us thinking about our health. And I understand that I just prefaced that by talking about eating ribs, but you <laughs> right, do it in right. moderation. I don't right. eat a rib every day. We, we don't talk about health yet, but we do talk about colorism. We do talk about um, different socioeconomic classes. Um, we talk about things, and, and I'm glad you mentioned colorism because I think that is definitely an issue within our community that needs to be discussed and explored. Yeah, for sure. Um, so really, you don't put anything on your face? <laughs> Lotion. Lotion. Like nothing that, like, you don't take your wife's stuff and put Oh, no, 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 no. She said don't touch. No, no, she doesn't. I mean, no, she doesn't. Okay. Sorry, guys. She, she I just, doesn't. sorry, I had to go back there for just a second because <laughs> I thought maybe while he was talking about colorism that it would come to his mind, the thing that he put on his face. But right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so tell us, I know, well, I'm going to go back to the show a little bit, but sure. we're, you're here and we want to hear about your life too, right? And um, living in California, what do you do beyond work that really brings you joy? We're all here in, you know, this beautiful place, most of us on vacation. And I like to talk about wellness and what brings people joy and what they do to, like, really relax and, and, and kind of center themselves. Is that right. something that you do? Do you meditate? You said you work out. Like, what do you, do you run? Do you? Yeah, my, my, uh, it's, it's the gym. That's where, that's kind of like what I do. You know, I, I live a very boring life. People, you know, it's, it really is. It really is just, even when I'm not, when I'm not working, I pretty much just get up, go to the gym and come back home. I don't, I don't do too much. Are you like, do you like binge watch shows with your wife? Are you like into like Netflix and chill? Like what do you do like to like chill out? So I watch a lot of sports. Um, I watch I watch a lot of docu series, Dateline, um, you know those types of shows. People like the Dateline. Like Dateline, moment. no Dateline's good. Yeah, Dateline's a good yeah. show. And um, you know then then, you know, sometimes I have to you know I have to be a good husband and and watch some shows with my wife. Like what? Oh my God! Like the reality shows of it all? Yes. Oh my God. I still don't. I still don't understand how she watches it. But yes, reality show. Like all the housewives stuff and all that. Yes. So you're really telling me it doesn't give you a good old chuckle sometimes, just to watch it and see the things. <laughs> I just don't. I, <laughs> does it give me a chuckle? It, it's. Ah, I mean, this is being recorded. I don't really want to say too much. <laughs> I can't. I can't say, I can't, I just. But you know what, you're a good husband for, you know, sitting there and obviously suffering through the, the reality shows of it all. Well, what it was, was so, you know, because, you know, when we're at home, you know, she watches so much that when we're at home, I'm in the other room watching my stuff and she's watching her stuff. Right. So what I tell her is, I say, listen, so we just have to do something together. So I watch your shows, but then you, you watch the game with me. You got to watch the game with me. And, but, you know, she's talking too much during the game, so I say, you got to go. <laughs> so I end, up, <laughs> I end up watching the game by myself, and, um, and that's how it and goes. And all sports? What game, like, what's the sport? That Football and basketball. Football, football and basketball, basketball primarily, yeah. What primarily. are your teams? Lakers and Eagles. Lakers. Lakers, okay. Okay, Philly Eagles. Eagles, yes. yes. Eagles? Yes. Okay. There we go, there we go, there we go. Yes. That's what it is right there. I grew up outside Philly, so Eagles for sure, for sure. Yep. Okay, so she kind of, you tell her, she starts watching the game and then she starts talking too much and then, but like yes, when, no. when do you do your romantic stuff? Like do you guys do date <laughs> night? Um, My I, husband's in the crowd, so this is really just for me to push him to do more date to night. To push him date so, night. Give us some good examples of date yeah, night Yeah, you stuff. know, we, we, we do try to do date night. 
Okay. But it doesn't always happen. It's hard. It's yeah. hard. It's hard to do date night. Do you like cook and like do that at the house? Like, will you cook and like, I'm got, I got it, babe. I'm going to make dinner. She doesn't the want wine. me to cook. No, nah, she doesn't want me to cook. Oh, you don't she cook doesn't. at all? I, you know, I, I make stuff for myself, but I'm a very basic eater. So when I make, like, now I'm in North Carolina by myself, so I make food for myself when I prepare, but it's very basic stuff. Right. I'm so not like a chef or anything like that. It's just very basic. Okay, so date night really would be like we're going out. Oh, um, oh yeah, oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're not doing this at home thing. We're gonna go out and have other people cook and do the things. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. When you're at home, do you ever watch your own movies? No. I see them at the premiere. Um, we're not putting on the best man or anything like oh, that. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll be watching our kind of people, though, so you guys got to watch it with me. Yes. We'll do so. Okay, so you'll watch this at home, but you don't put on, like, Boys in the Hood. Like. Well, so with, no, no, no. So with movies, you know, you go to the premiere and you see it at the premiere, but with most of the time um, for a TV show, they'll send us, we'll watch it, like, that day, or sometimes I just wait to watch it with the audience and tweet and all that type of stuff. So I kind of like that experience better than I would watch at, I watch at home. Right. I guess that would be kind of weird just to like sit at home and watch yourself like in a movie. I don't know. Like I, these are just the questions that come to my head as a journal. I'm like, do they ever put it on? Or like, did you watch your movies with like your kids? No. And be like, look, look at. No, like, no. It, you know, for me, Daddy. watching stuff is an excruciating process because I'm, I'm, I've always felt, I always feel I could do better every time I see it. Mm -hmm. And so I get mad at myself. Well, why didn't I do, oh, why did I do that? And why didn't I look this way instead of that? Just small stuff bothers me, so it's kind of excruciating. So once I see it at the premiere, I just let it go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this premiere is September 21st. September 21st on Fox, and you guys are going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Like you said, I think that it's really amazing. I mean, I think it's special one. I mean, we're, we're talking at the film festival about a lot of projects that aren't based here. And so this is a really special project because we're all here together in this magical place of Martha's Vineyard. And this show is going to be bringing that place to life in a really dramatic way, which Without I think is so much fun. Without, and that, it, it actually, honestly, it takes me, it does take me back to Boys in the Hood because when I did Boys in the Hood, okay. people didn't know what was going on in South Central. Of course, we knew because we were in California, you know, we we're in LA, but no one else knew. And it's kind of like here with Martha's Vineyard. It's, it's Martha's Vineyard is, is kind of like an East Coast thing. You know, people on the West Coast, they don't really talk about it too much. Right. So I was really asking you, I was like, where do people go? I mean, I do have some friends from the West Coast that come out here, if they know about it. Any West Coasters? Okay. okay, where are you guys from? Anybody from California? San Diego. Oakland, LA, Oakland, San LA. Diego. Anywhere else? Cle Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Phoenix. Yeah. Phoenix, yeah. okay. So, yeah, uh, so it's... Um, you know, and it, it, to me, you know, it's the tradition, like I say, of the social right. clubs and, and the fraternities and all of the stuff that I'm really excited about. Yeah. Do they talk about Greek life? Yes. We talk about Greek, like Greek life. And do you use the actual organization? You can't do that, right? So you just, like, made uh, uh, Joe Morton's character on the show is a Q. Okay. Like a real Q. Like, they ain't. Yes. You know how they do, y'all. Like, well, how do we do? They, so you say they don't they, use the real, us. I'm an Alpha Cap Alpha. Okay. So, like, they'll be like, ah, okay, I'm an AK, something else. Uh, um, but, you know, they, they don't necessarily use the actual organization, the real organization's letters and stuff, just to make sure that, like, y'all want to get sued? Talking about us in some <laughs> crazy way or whatever. So he's actually a Q in the, um, he calls in the show. He calls himself a Q. Okay. Yep. All right. I love that. Yep. I love that. Um, so you were saying, like, on the West Coast, folks didn't, don't really know about the They don't the really vineyard. talk about it. No, it's not really, it's not really talked about. Like yeah. yeah. So this will be an uh, opportunity for them to learn about that. And those people that are from the West Coast, I'm kind of curious. Did you grow up on the East Coast? There it is. 
There it is. There it is. There, there it is. is. So people yeah. growing up on the West Coast, this is not really, you know, it's not really talked about. And when you do bring it up to your West Coast friends, are they like, what is that? Where is that? Like, you know, they don't, people don't know. It's like, you know, even when I, when I was telling people about the show, I said, hey, what, you, what are you doing in North Carolina? I'm doing this show, you know, it takes place, you know, about the you know, Black Elite, Martha's Vineyard. Oh, okay. And it's just it. There's not nothing that's like. The shade. Yeah. Like, well, because people don't know. That's what I'm saying. We're going to explore a lot of things. We're going to, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of things and we're going to, we're going to convey a lot of things that people don't even just know about. Right. Do you think the way you're talking, since we're talking around the subject, we're not getting into it yet because we can't. Do yes. you think the way in which you present Martha's Vineyard and um, the culture um, will pique people's interest to come and want to come and see it? Or do, will they feel like, oh, I can't, like, where I, I won't fit in? I think the, or way, in, I think the way in which, in which we're presenting it, people are going to want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's opulence, it's, it's wealth. I mean, we're really, we're really hitting that. It's opportunity. It's, it, you know, there's, it's a lot. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, like, I feel like what, what, I, what I love about the vineyard is, like, I always say, it's like, I love seeing black people in joy and at rest. Right? Yes. It's very... Yes. yes. To... You know, we don't have a private plane and, like, all of those things and, like, um, you know and millions of dollars in the bank at all. It's coming. We're going to manifest that too. <laughs> but I love to be here around my people who, and, and that, uh, who are enjoying that we're not, or hopefully not stressed out and we're, we're on the beach and we're chilling and we're laughing and we're joking. And, and for that to be shown, I think is hopefully is a part of the, of the, the, the storytelling too around this show is that like, Beyond the money and the opulence is that, like, it's also a place where we just can, like, let our hair down, even though our hair grows up, which is awesome. Right. Like, that sort I of agree. Thing. Well, which brings me, my question to everybody here is that, so, you know, the show is going to premiere September 21st, and hopefully it's going to be successful. Are you guys ready for the influx of people coming <laughs> to Martha? Because it's cute now, you know what I'm saying? But you guys get the airports overrun, I hotels know. book. Y'all ready for that? Oh, now everybody! Oh, now everybody not ready for it, huh? Oh, now y'all not okay. Okay. Well, the thing is, I think that that's happened over the years, as you know, word of mouth. I mean, and social media, right? Once you start posting about how special and magical it is, people are like, "Hold up, what's that?" And da da da. da. And like, I had a friend who came for the first time, and um, they they um, posted on their Instagram. They were like, "This is like Essence Festival in like New Orleans, but like." chicer and like cooler and by the beach you know like that sort of thing so it's like this this thing that's like well now we have to go and see it and like do it so it's happening already but right but i mean you know people talked about essence festival but once girls trip came out it was really getting down there right right so yeah. hopefully that's the same effect here you know they see it on the show it's fox everybody at home they're gonna be coming check y'all out yeah for sure oh everybody for sure. everybody grumbling now y'all not ready for that oh. Every, well, nobody's we excited about the show anymore. No, maybe we, I well, we can't leave maybe it on I that note. Said that, right? Well, no, we but we would do this. We would do the city and the people in the city justice. Um, but we will, we will have some stuff to talk about. Well, I love that you are celebrating this magical place. That we are all here together right now, and we are super excited about it. Thank, Thank you, you for being a part of it. Thanks, Fox, for bringing it to us. Thank you. Our kind of people. September 21st First. on Fox, y'all. Please Nine Nine help me in thanking Morris Chestnut for being thank here. Thank you, guys. Tonight. Please watch the show. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming out. Appreciate it.